Hello there. Uh, my name is Erdem Dilbaz. Uh, I'm from Istanbul. Um, I'm the founder of uh, the huge group of nerds. Uh, our team is called Nerdworking. And we're based from Istanbul. We're based on Istanbul. But uh, we met a lot of people around the world, technicians, electronic guys, and artists, and designers, and architects. We work together, and we kind of solve the problem how we work together, collaborate, uh, without any space, physical space limits, and uh, without any, um, any the kind of uh, the problem with the communication. Actually, the, the most, prop, most important thing for us to communicate uh, in a right way, because it's really hard to work uh, with the talented people. Because then, you know, every talented people has some kind of an ego to express themselves. But it's really hard to work together on one particular project. And when you want to work together, and when you want to solve any problem and discuss it, everybody wants to add their own perspective on the project. But um, at the end, it might be a problem because the, the, um, if the, your project is really valuable and it's really attractive for the talented people, they immediately get high with the project and focusing to focusing on their needs to do what 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 can they do actually the what, one of the most biggest uh, desire and to show and to express themselves on this project. But after all those years and the all the artists, art scene and technology, techno, tech, tech scene actually changed a bit. And it took, at the beginning of 2000, uh, everybody focusing on the and paying attention just one artist or just one project. But day by day, uh, with the help of the development in the technological world and having this kind of a little chips, Arduinos and other stuff, and People understand that they can contribute any project from far distance and uh, they could be working together as a collaborative way, in a collaborative way. And, and this also comes with the brilliant ideas because the people uh, would like to match each other and see the compatibility of working together. They, they kind of find a new friends. And the most important thing actually, uh, other important thing in this uh, art and tech scene, and finding the good partners and also finding the friends is a very human thing. And everybody wants to meet the people like themselves. And then, but you know, then when you are a nerd, it's really hard to go out and socialize and find the good partners and etc. But um, when you find the right people for you, nobody wants to leave them. They always want to work together. They always want to discuss their ideas day or night. It doesn't matter. They just want to get together and work focusing on and working on and their ideas and working maybe till the morning. And there is no time to go to work. There is no time to sleep actually. But, and this enthusiasm comes also another problem for about management. And because the, when we work together as a playground, in a playground, and also we work all the, we work on any project as our new products or the ideas that, sh that, that we want to indicate the public, and somebody needs to manage the system. Okay, this is our playground. We are working on this playground. But how could, how is that possible to afford a life just playing some items, some ideas or some devices? Uh, this is the most, uh, actually one of the most problematic part of the nerd and art and tech scene because um, somebody needs to sell them, sell these products that we produce and also somebody needs to control the traffic everything is going on well or not, what they need, what do they need, what all the artists need actually. And 
And then I decided to write some kind of economical model and uh, some kind of a collaboration system between the nerds around the world. Actually, it worked very well. Um, but I think it's coming to its end because people, the, these nerd people, found, find their, found their uh, soulmates and found their locations to live, to work together. And actually, my economical model and system needs to be revised, needs to be revised again. And, and, and I'm taking a few notes in the last few months. And I'm seeing that the people need some kind of a new model too. Because artists and designers, also scientists, have the, have the same um, point at the beginning. And that there is a big question mark uh, in all the occasion of, in their thoughts. For example, artists or scientists start at the beginning with the same question mark. But the artists uh, trying to solve this question, going on the different patterns and much, much, much more ex, uh, experimental patterns than the scientists do. Scientists does, a scientist do, because the scientist generally going the particular way is that, yeah, hypothesis, thesis, and experiment, and other hypothesis, and experiment, thesis, and thesis, and then, then there are lots of uh, experimental steps that they know how to get the proof about their idea for supporting their idea, but artists going up and down, up and down, up and down, and trying different things. And between these patterns, there is a huge empty space. For example, if the scientist were, uh, scientist, scientific way to prove something is like this, a thin line, but an artistic one is like much more like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. And between these, uh, graphics, there's a huge empty block for the designers actually. They could understand both way and how what the artists want to do or what the artists get as an output from their idea on this way. And also scientists need to be much more artistic if they want to work together. And designer is the key on this point and is the, in this uh, empty field. And, but uh, after all those years, from since and actually from 2000 to 2013 or 14, um, everybody trying to go in this empty field. But now I think the system is getting much more solid and everybody works together and they have actually going far more steps than we expected no at that and at that days and i'm seeing that the people on the on the digital uh, area and digital movements and they are now finding uh, they're now finding uh, new focuses they just want to produce new products they they just want to know how to work the others, they just want to know uh, how to live without an office um, or how to live and how to live together by using their own boundaries of life for life and using their own rules and rule set in their minds. And I think the new problem is coming and everybody is now settled and they are working very hard and very happy but after all those years now they just need to they just need to produce new kind of way of thinking because the when you play too much an idea or your friends and it spends a lot of time and you are going down down focusing this project and other project and playing other the games and playing other chips, playing other ideas, you are going directly deep into something and you are forgetting out of uh, your life and you don't know what's going on around. You need to also feed yourself. If you produce something, you need to consume something too. 
And you need to go out, you need to walk, you need to talk, you need to socialize, you need to feed yourself, and you need to consume new data. Because the new data means that you are kind of a catalyzer and then you need to, if you have a new data, you need to catalyze and you need to provide a new output for the public. Because I, I believe that uh, if we are a human on the earth, and we have some kind of a responsibility to the world, uh, which is that cumulatively all the people before us live, uh, all the people live before us and experience a lot of things, tools and ideas, mathematics and computers and games and etc. And they, this human history provide us an end product whenever, see, whenever we see the time. And we see the new product at the end of this, it's time developed and the perfect match for us when we think of it. But we just, we don't need to just use it. We need to also add on it, add on our idea on it and provide it to the world. And I will show you something that we made with our friends together. And I will also explain how we do it. And I think it, it will give an idea how the nerds and the managers and artists and designers work together and how could it be possible to create an idea um, as an output and as a product. And first, uh, I have a very good example for you. And it's very funny. There are tons of things. For example, this one is made by two guys. One of them, Osman Koch. He's going to be in the next section after mine. His friend, uh, Feti. They made very interesting things. Then they, they were thinking about the free will of a like, man. Do we have a free will or not, actually? And then they put and they, they find an EEG, very cheap and very basic EEG. But, uh, but they use this EEG for actually making an interactive movie. When you put this EEG on your head and start to watch the movie, movie has some kind of points, that actually two points with the four different stories. And this movie changes its scenario depending on your feelings. For example, you feel excited, it goes different scenario. You feel uh, scared, it goes different scenario. And you have chance to see four different scenario in just one movie. And it's really interesting to, to see the output of the people, the reaction of the people, because they really don't understand what is going on, but they also know what is going on. Because the normally interactive movie or interactive uh, books, you need to choose, the, and the system need, uh, push to choose something. You need to go that way or, or that way. You need to go this page or this page. You need to choose the way. But now, for example, on this particular product, you are, it's actually discussable, you are not a directly into ch to choosing, but you also choose the way to go in the movie. But it's really complicated and it's really excited also for us. But, and I also would like to show you something different. And after a few years, and I knew this, I knew that the Osman and his friend made this thing before, and I remember idea in my mind and said that, hmm, wait a second guys, if we have this, we had this EEG hacked, then we could use it for, and it was kind of much more popular game for the public because I'm always focusing to idea to public and our time technology is your friend and you could touch it, you could interact it. Actually, we don't like white cubes, neither our art museum or something at somewhere else. We just want to express all our feelings on the public space. Then I got an idea that we could make some kind of a game with these brainwave things. And then we decided to make a brainwave cons actually. And we call it Brain Race together.
like as you see, and it's really interesting game for the people, for the public, because it's just a game for us. And but the people um, think different, talk differently. They just came over there and played this game. And they don't say they didn't say that. Wow, it's uh, what a good artistic idea behind this project, or what such a great technology we have we had now working on and playing on. They just said that wow, man, it's a great game. We are controlling the cars with our brain waves. Okay, it's great, and it's, they had a lot of fun uh, for a very long time, and it, we played three or four days over that festival, and then we saw that the people really. Um, adaptive people are were really adaptable to any kind of interactive device again and again the, but it's really easy to do it most of the people around us then um, don't do anything first step is really hard for every, everyone else I know but it's actually not hard to do something if you want to do um, yeah if you will and um, for example we had this um, EEGs and we bought other EEGs and we maybe gave pay uh, 20 euros or 40, 30 euros this shitty uh, car race, Skeletrix and then we put everything together and start to play. It was easy then we invited our friends and they collaborate with us and they came, they played and they said it's okay um, and we saw that the people also liked it, the idea. And then a lot of young guys, especially university students, graduation students, and wants to see that there is another part of life, another part of uh, business models that they can, they can go into, they can work together. And actually the best part of our job uh, in the digital era and giving some motivation and giving some inspirations to others um, because the people are really uh, curious normally the, all the days we have and um, just passing by we are going somewhere else, coming back, going there and meet friends and drink coffee and etc but the people really curious when you see the little things like this on the street and they're going there and trying to play it and when you put something on the street, especially public spaces, people really want to, really want to play with it. They really want to know how it works, and and it's really good. I suggest all the, the people in the digital movements to serve their ideas and products on the public spaces. For example, I have another idea, and uh, sorry, I have uh, we have another project that we made also with the two different teams and one of them is a stage design company one of them uh, nerdworking and Osman coach and few designers friend and we got together and start to play with the lasers because we like the lasers friend came uh, one or two um, red light red light lasers Get some little mirrors and we started to, to make a pentagram with the lasers and then after a few days later and we went to the seaside of the east and there was a construction on the way and it was really hard like this but then we maybe we need to make this kind of a laser room at the movie there and, and trying to go to the and uh, big a uh, case and a cage actually with the laser you need to go to the at the end of the route and find the uh, reach the valuable things to st steal and then we little prototype it's actually it's just a cartoon board and with the um, with the red silks and mock-up and go to the big company and say that we would like to do it and real and we, and they said that okay we will think about it and then they provide us money and I will show its video how it works
Let's see. As you can see, it's really funny thing to 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 to, to use this kind of a laser room on the public space, and it was it was really good to see that the people trying to do something with it. Um, all, all of them has a different story, but the the most common thing in those stories is um, playing with the ideas and. Also, when when you want to play something on the street, like like try trying to think about your childhood, and you go out and playing a ball or playing some dirt and something like this, somebody some of the guys or girls and try to try to come to you and maybe shy away, I don't know, but other one wants to play with you too. And this is the, the digital moment also works like this. When you play some idea, uh, other guys who are interested in it wants to play with you too because you found something. You actually found uh, something new for them. For example, if you're a child, you find some bug. If you're a child and you find a new dirt that can make and uh, that can shape like a castle, I don't know. But you tr it means that you trigger others' passion to play with you. And the digital moment actually works like this. And when you start to place on an idea, and other also wants to come and join to you. And this is the this is our zeitgeist actually. And this is our this is our spread now. And now it's going to be much more commercial because and we, we would like to we would like to earn our life from our ideas that we played already and this is the hard part actually but it's going really really well and by the way do you if you have any questions please send me or write on to youtube channel i'm now i think i can check it no and um, let me check no, I couldn't check it, but if you have any questions, you could write it and the organization team uh, send the questions to me and also I really would like to be happy to answer your questions. And let me check. Okay, if you don't have any questions yet, I'm going to different steps. Mm. Okay, we have one question over there. How would you describe the advantages and disadvantages of working in a multidisciplinary team? What was the most frustrating thing for you? <laughs> okay, 
Uh, it's a really good question. Uh, advantage and working in a multidisciplinary team, uh, it feels you really, really good and really, 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 really better. But uh, the the hard part of in hard part of working in a multidisciplinary team and frustrating thing is nothing going its end the time when you want. Actually, you need to wait somebody or somebody needs to wait you. And that might be the much most frustrating thing because you just want to do something and but you start to play with your friends and somebody sent the code. Maybe somebody needs to send the design to you, but there is no design yet, but you have a huge passion and you are really excited to do something but you need to wait. Uh, I think it's really frustrating. And also, the other frustrating part of my job, actually I'm, I'm generally working on the uh, as a producer and also it means that you need to work for the, uh, you need to work for the, as a bridge between the client and your team. And the deadlines are really frustrating for me that time because um, your friend, you, your friends, your team needs to think that they are playing something. They are need to be, they are happy, but also they need to be, uh, they need to be focused on the deadlines. It's really hard because one of one deadline uh, is different thing, and the playing is different thing. Um, but I'm seeing that the people in our community, all other communities, they have much more bigger responsibility than the people uh, before us because they, they are now. They, they are knowing that yeah we are playing a game um, but it's it should be delivered the time we uh, we said and it's good it's and it's I'm seeing that the people trying to learn how it works and they they need to understand actually uh, they started to understand uh, we need this money to play a game with the new devices. And I'm, I think that uh, this, this frustrating part is going to be uh, over soon. And we have another question is that what is most difficult thing to do when it comes to managing people? Whoa! Oof. Okay, <laughs> it's another good question. Uh, let me roll a cigarette for you. The most difficult thing managing people is that you are if in in networking or the team like this and you don't need to go to the work at nine o'clock you don't need to leave your work pm and it means that there is no time first and also it affects everything and um, you actually, I f I'm feeling that I need to be sober. I need to be alive. I need to be. I don't need to be in the bed and sleeping. Uh, I need to be aware anytime because the managing is a big res comes with the big responsibility because you are facing with the direct client and they are not your friends. And you are also be in the team working with your friends, and you need to you need to find some kind of a balance between the client and the, your people, your friends, and the managing part, managerial part. Is sometimes it's really getting hard because you need to write some kind of agreements, but also you need to go to the, the workshops and see how it works, how it's going on. You need to make brainstorming and it's a very playful time. And But after a minute, you need to call the clients about the new rules and new uh, agreement sets, uh, systems and etc. It's a kind of a... Um, it's a mindfuck situation actually. Um, if you are just a person in the team, it's really good. But if you're managing the team, you feel a lot of pressure and big responsibility to everyone else because the, you are the real leader and everybody is looking at you and you are the first one to 
get blamed actually. Do we have another questions? Let me check. By the way, I would like to see something to you. I'm searching something for you too. Hmm. Okay, I will I will show you the tools that we use, but first um, there is one question and uh, I need to turn on the light, sorry. Uh, we have another great question from the community and said that advice on finding first clients. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's really hard because nobody believes you at the beginning. And when we, when we found the nerd working, um, I was <coughs> knocking a lot of doors, maybe for a year. 45 or 50 clients door I was knocking every day every time I was calling them I was sending emails to them and trying to say that yeah we would like to do something like this I found some video on the internet or I took the video the thing we made and nobody believes you because the company or clients wants to be sure that you did it before and you will do do it for them too and if you don't have any product on your hands and if you didn't do anything the thing you want to do in the future uh, it's really hard to find the first client but I suggest you to um, make your prototypes I'm giving this example every time for example if you and it's really important for selling or marketing of your business um, uh, if you want to do or if you want to sell something and um, think about it the creative industry has a big problem actually for selling something I will explain the way how, how we sell uh, but it's the wrong thing I will also uh, try to correct it um, first and uh, normally for example, we are going to grocery and just buy a tomatoes and we see that oh, there are tomatoes and we take it and we pay it. It's enough and okay, done. But in our community and creative industries, the problem is much more bigger than this. Actually, this thing would be a problem. Everybody wants to sell their ideas and making some presentations and trying to sell their ideas just using this stupid presentation, actually. Um, think about it another way, and as a kind of an analogy. Um, for example, you are going to grocery again. You just want to buy tomatoes, and think about the grocery guy and showing the empty plate with the two D print out tomatoes and saying that if you give us some money you will have these great tomatoes. Man, this is not a humanistic. And we are doing this in our creative industries. It's really shit way to sell something. Everybody wants to see and touch or feel something. We, we know that how they feel. And because of that, we are trying to mesmerize them with our presentation. But there is nothing on the table yet. I suggest you to do something um, something um, something proper thing to work actually and uh, it shouldn't be perfect it shouldn't be great it shouldn't be playful but you need to show them yeah we made something we tried and it works in a little mock-up or something like this but if you pay the rest we will do it for you at a bigger size and it's a really good way to sell because the, in the companies, people says, uh, on the people people you face, 
generally using companies' money, and it means that they have a responsibility and uh, they need to be uh, they need to be they need to be sure that they are spending this money right way. And also, you if you do something wrong, as a not the client side and your side, if you do something wrong, and it will be really expensive for them, and they don't want to take this risk. And because of that, I I'm really suggesting to do something proper working things on your of your idea output, and show them and say that we would like to do it. At the beginning, we it actually helped us. We uh, took some videos from our animation tools or the games that, are, that we made and we tried to sell it. Then we, sell, so we, then we sold it and we got money and we invest another business. And it works like this. And I think uh, I have a few minutes left. Uh, but... I would like to show it to you uh, which type of tools would help you to think from different perspective. For example, um, analytic tools. It's really important, guys, and because the, we are working on the if you are working on the experience design or interaction design or digital systems, I believe that we. We got the singularity before everyone else because we need. We know that we need to. We need to see any object or any subject uh, needs to be seen from different angles. And for example, in networking, we are using these analytic tools: visual design, architecture, industrial design, machine learning, electronic engineering, interaction design, information architecture, and sound design. Also. We are also using cognitive tools too. Psychology, communication, sensation, cognitive science, sociology, design, art and craft. When we call it experience design, it involves everything else. Because the experience uh, means that the, you need to give some sense to your audience when they go into place that you design or they play with. And then you're actually designing their experience when they, when, uh, when they finish to interact with your systems. It's the best thing actually you can do, uh, making mockups, creating the same room or same toys before going to public space and try it with your friends and listen to them how they feel. They are okay with it. They are not good or try to actually Try to get some kind of a feedbacks. It would be the best actually to maximize the effect of your experience. And do we have another question or I'm almost finished. I'm waiting your questions now. There are tons of things to say actually. I don't know. Digital moments, that's a big, 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 big issue. But I think I will give some kind of a, a good example for you how we work and how we communicate. But if you have another question, I'm waiting for you for a few minutes too. Mm, let me check my notes. Almost done. By the way, at that time, let me show you some thing we made during that time. For example, this one is our biggest work. In Turkey, there is an Aydar Pasha train station on the Asian side, and it was to 2500 square meters place. And Janda Shishman, Deniz Kadar, and Gyorkem Shan and me worked on it. At that time, Istanbul was one of the European capital of culture, and it was really good to do it. It was 2010. Seven years before that time, before now, uh, it's really interesting to do it because till that time, everybody thinks that visual mapping will be like kinda 
illusion. Something's going behind the columns and etc. making some illusion. But with this, with our explanation of Istanbul, everybody understand that the mapping, visual mapping, would be kind of a stage performance, like theater or opera. It would be the best thing to hear from uh, everyone around the world, actually. They, are, they were really amazed at that time. Uh, maybe my other suggestion for you to find different perspective and different approach for your projects and then try to do something new that nobody believes you at the beginning. And we have, I think, another question. Did you became people you work with? For instance, if you work with designers, you start think like one. Ah, it's a good question, actually. And it's really interesting. People are, uh, are some kind of a adaptations and some kind of a transparency each other, if you like them each other also. And for example, and um, at the beginning, one of the coder doesn't understand uh, how to... And the problem is actually they're about the jargon. They, they, they use the same words, but they don't understand each other exactly what they want to do, what they want to say. And for example, the one of the, in one of my projects, I recognize that the architects using the production, using the word production, and for preparing something for their design and but the stage team uh, when you, when they called production they immediately understand that they need to go somewhere else hang some tools and take the projectors and take make cabling and etc and they don't they didn't understand each other but after few words and after few days actually they start to understand their own jargon. For example, one coder uh, understand what architects wants to explain when they uh, use the word uh, architecture, because the coding architecture is different. The architecture, architect, uh, architecture is different, and it's really good to see they are kind of getting way to understand each other, and it gives them a very good power to work together actually. And one more question. Um, in managing team, do you use any online managing tool app or have you made your own? Uh, oh, actually, um, we are using Slack, but not much. Um, few of my friends suggest us to use Trello. Uh, some, in some project I'm using Trello, but generally we are using Slack and uh, email not online too, maybe we need to use actually. And if we don't have any question, uh, I'm really thankful for all the Dacia team and because it was really good to have this kind of a chance. I'm sitting in Istanbul and trying to reach the people that are really curious. And I'm really happy to be here now. Um, if you have any question, you could reach us from uh, via email or Twitter or Facebook account, and it's just basic nerd working. And if you want to send an email, use the email is nerd at nerdworking.org. And Twitter and Facebook and Instagram address the same nerd working. Uh, we are very responsive for your questions. Uh, please come with an idea and send us your products and try to um, work together and collaborate and there is nothing to say from my side and I'm at the end now and hope to see you soon again. Ciao!